Good morning my beautiful brothers and sisters in Yeshua. Today is Friday the 13th of October 2023. It is 10.08 a.m. here in Australia. I hope you're all doing very well. I hope you've been blessed. Uh, brothers and sisters, this is a, going to be a very extensive Bible study and um, lots and lots and lots of scriptures from Father God's Almighty Word and brothers and sisters i want to have a spoiler alert right from the beginning um, that you must be sure and i'm going to prove it to you a hundred percent without a doubt that uh, our father our loving father in heaven our abba papa um, he loves this world so much okay that he gave his one and only begotten son that whoever shall believe in him shall be saved and not perish but have eternal life. And that same loving Abba Papa, the Almighty God, he has some incredible things that our mind cannot even comprehend in store for us very, very, very shortly. I want you to know that it is that the rapture, the deliverance, the hapazo, the sparing, the escape, whatever you want to call it, this is the ultimate description of our father's character. Take a look at yourself as a mum or a dad. Are you not, would you not give your life for your own children? Would you not be there in a heartbeat when they call you on the phone and say, Mama, Papa, I'm in trouble. Please help me, rescue me. Will you not give everything that you have to, um, to help your children out if they're hungry? Well, how much more does our loving Father in Heaven, our Abba, Papa, how much more does He love us than we? We are in, inherently evil and we love our children so much. Imagine how much our Father in Heaven loves us and what He has in store for us. So you must know, before I even get into this video, brothers and sisters, before people turn off after their uh, attention span has gone, you must know that the promises of the word of God are sure. They are true. They are, um, they are affirmation of God's wonderful character and how much he loves us. He promised us in his word that um, he will spare us from the hour of trial. He promised us in his word that not a hair on our head will perish and in our patience possesses our souls. He promised us with everything that is written in the word of God that he will protect us if we call on his name. So I want you to, I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, right from the get-go that this promise will be fulfilled and it's going to be fulfilled before many, many, many people in the world will even realize. What I have come to understand by doing a... Um, a good hour study just this morning just to um, prepare for this video that I'm doing today what I'm realizing is that um, we have been so deceived from the church fathers from the priests from the pastors from the ministers um, to let us know where how, actually how far we are into the book into the revelation of all this stuff they have lied to us, brothers and sisters. We are a lot further on than any of us could even imagine. And this, and this is exactly what the devil planned on doing so that we were continuously saying to each other, oh, more stuff has to happen. This has to happen. This has to happen. This has to happen. No, brothers and sisters, we are here. We are here right now. And we're going to go through the scriptures and up here I've got what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I've got 12 books open to show you, to give you the witness and the proof that Father's Word is awesome. Okay, Father's Word is awesome. And um, it is going to come to pass and it's going to come to, up to pass before a lot of people can realize and this is why it says it's going to come as a snare upon the whole world because so many people do not realize that today is like the day of your salvation we must be ready we must watch 
This is exactly the same scenario as the first Passover, brothers and sisters. Father told us to have a staff in the hand, to have our sandals on, to eat in haste and be watchful. And it should be a night of vigilance. Where we are in the world, I cannot express enough, is right at the pivotal point of being on that cliff front, that cliff face. Okay, this is how close we are, brothers and sisters, and so many people will will try and come at you and say that this, no, we've got more things, this isn't the surrounding of Jerusalem, this isn't, um, you know, Revelation being filled. And what's even worse is people are now coming, or not just now, it's been going for quite a while, but people are saying these things have been fulfilled already in the um, 70 AD. Brothers and sisters, please, Please do not listen to these things. All of these things are to distract you and take you away from watching and being ready for the snare that's about to come upon this whole earth. So I'm going to let my Father in Heaven, Jehovah, I'm going to let Him lead. And I'm going to, um, His words, His thoughts, His will, not mine. I am but a vessel. So I have got some books open and I've written some notes and I'm sure we're going to talk a lot more in depth about each note that's been written. And uh, so basically we're just going to do a big Bible study, brothers and sisters, because it's the only way to give your heart assurance that it's not what man says. It's not what I say. It is from the word of God. And take everything yourself, brothers and sisters, to the Father in prayer. OK, I myself am a human being. I am you know, fallible, but the almighty God, he's perfect and he will answer your prayers when you ask him in the name of his precious son, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. So let's get into this study, brothers and sisters. I wanted to reassure you first and foremost that we are being deceived into where we are in time and how much time we have left. We have to be ready. We have to have our staff in hand, our sandals on and be watching and have a night vigil. It is it is go time, brothers and sisters. It is absolutely go time. OK, so up here I have Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. They are the coming of the Son of Man chapters. Again, Matthew, the book of Matthew 24, that is speaking to the Jews Okay, the book of Mark 13 is speaking to the world and the book of Luke 21 is speaking to the church. Okay, you can see the difference in them, particularly um, the first one here. In Matthew it says, and then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and kill you. Okay, then in Mark it says that they're going to take you up and you're going to be beaten. But in Luke 21 it says they're going to lay their hands and lay their hands on you and persecute you and we have already been through this brothers and sisters this is when we love Yeshua Jesus Christ and we follow him we got to pick up his cross and the more we pick up his cross the more we follow Yeshua Jesus Christ um, the more trials and tribulations we're going to have on this earth and because we are coming right up to the birth as a woman and any other woman that has given birth you will know the labor starts you know 15 20 minutes apart you get a contraction then it comes down to 10 minutes apart and it's sporadic it's 10 minutes here eight minutes here 15 minutes here okay then they start coming at a more um like a pattern you know every eight minutes apart then they get to every five minutes apart and then every you know four minutes apart and then you know the difference in pain it goes from being exciting, um, you know, when you first start getting a little contraction or whatever, you like, oh, yes, yes, my baby's coming, my baby's coming, this is awesome, because you forget, okay, you forget, if you've had more than one baby, you forget how painful it is, you're just so excited to see this baby, because of the the travailing in pain, especially the last month or so when you're pregnant, it's heavy, it's, it's um, uncomfortable, you want this baby to be born. So when the time comes, you're excited. Just like we all are now, we're so excited. But there's there's that um, 
You know, there's that time of great tribulation, which we are in now. And please hear me. The great tribulation is completely different than the wrath and the affliction and Jacob's trouble of, of father. Okay, it is completely different. The great tribulation is the last push and the last refining and the last purifying that God is giving to his children. The ones that are sitting on that fence and, and father all around the world right now, our brothers and sisters who are a lukewarm of heart, father is putting them through trials, persecutions, um, tribulations, uh, refinings and purifyings, okay, to make their robes white, as it says in Daniel 11. Some of them with understanding shall fall to, try, to purge them and to make them white, okay. This is exactly what needs to happen, brothers and sisters. Father has been, been so patient and so merciful for so many thousands of years. And he knows where we are now. He knows at any moment he's going to say, it is finished, son, go get your bride. So he doesn't want any soul to perish. And remember, he says he chastises those that he loves. So if you're going through a great persecution, a great trial, a great tribulation in your own life, it is because the Father loves you and he is trying to get you to turn back to him and rely on him and lay everything before his throne. Give it to Jesus. Give it to his son. His son will take on that yoke for you because his son has conquered everything because he loves you. He's conquered death. He's conquered hell. He's, he's, the victory has already been won, brothers and sisters. So there's no point in trying to struggle on this on your own. Give it to Christ. Lay it before the throne of the Almighty God. And, um, But brothers and sisters, this is the beginning of sorrows. Okay, The beginning of sorrows has worked its way up since 2020. Okay, In March the 11th, 2020, um, the announcement of the you know what went out to the whole world. Okay, the reason things go out to the whole world is because Father is trying to wake us up. And the fact that this timeline matches perfectly. Okay, as you see in Pharaoh's dream, he had, uh, not Pharaoh, sorry, Joseph's dream, he dreamt of the seven years of plenty and then the seven years of famine and sorrow. This is exactly what's happened to us. Exactly what's happened to us, brothers and sisters, um, except our time was shortened. So we've had three and a half years of plenty, but because we're coming up to the end of that three and a half years of plenty, like imminently any day now, um, we are starting to cross over into the famine and the sorrows and everything like that. This is why right near the end, okay, and Father said, I'm going to cut the time short for the sake of the elect, for the sake of my children, I'm going to make that sh time a lot shorter. And he cut it in half. You must remember that the Antichrist, the beast, only has a 42 month reign. We've just gone through the first three and a half years of the seven years. Okay, we're, we're literally at the cusp of the end of it. We're at the end of the black horse, the probation horse, the horse that is weighing in the balance. Okay, weighing in the balance. Are you found by your own works or are you found by the grace of God and the gift that he gave via his son? Which do you rely on? Are you covered in the blood of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, or are you trying to work your way into heaven? We can only be saved by believing in his son. It is what Jesus Christ did on that cross. His atoning sacrifice. That is it. That is the whole reason we are saved, brothers and sisters, by believing on what Jesus did on the cross. That is all Father has asked of you. He doesn't want you to do anything else. To, to make you think you can get to heaven, Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. Okay, the only way to back to the Father. 
So believe on his son, believe what he did on the cross, believe that the father rose the son from the grave three and a half days later. And then then um, Yeshua Jesus Christ went back to the father's mansion and then started the mission to prepare places for us. So these places are the heavenly temporary arcs that we are about to enter into while Father's indignation is going to overpass on this earth. We are going to receive our rewards and the wicked will receive their rewards on this earth. Woe to those who dwell on the earth because the devil has come down to you and he's wrath because he has a short time left. Okay, brothers and sisters, so let's continue on here. Um, so, and Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him to show him the building of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be? What will be the sign of thy coming? And what is going to be the sign of the end of the world? There's three questions here, not just two. When will the things be is in reference to when there's going to be not left one stone upon another. That has already been fulfilled, brothers and sisters, and that was at the destruction of the temple. Okay, in 70 AD. This has already happened, the first one third of this question. Okay, then he goes on to say that take heed that no man deceives you. And brothers and sisters, we have to be on absolute guard day and night. Okay, we cannot be found naked. We have to always have the staff in our hand. We always must be looking. We always must be reading more than ever. In the word of God. We must be living this, breathing this, eating this as our daily bread. Um, because everything else is out to deceive. Everything in this world. All the churches, all the um, the different versions of the Bible, all the um, everything, brothers and sisters. Satan has infiltrated his way into everything. That is why Father said, come out of her, my people. Right? And write the scriptures on your heart. So that when someone says something, instead of getting fearful and doubtful, you can say, no, I know my father, I know his word. And he did not say that. Okay, because even he said, come to me as like a child. A child can know the word of God because it will be revealed to that child through the spirit of the living God, the Holy Spirit. Okay, not because someone's a scholar and they've gone to Bible college for 20 years. No, unfortunately, more than likely, those types of people are so far from the truth and they aren't entering into the kingdom of heaven because of their pride and tradition that they're trying to stop all of us from going in too. Brothers and sisters, you are, you, you are the father's child. That's how important you are. He has numbered every hair on your head. He thought about you. At the creation of this world and he said I am gonna make you Sally and you Tom to be at the very last generation of this earth to witness the most incredible thing that has ever come since Christ actually walked on this earth and that is going to be the revelation of my son when he comes to receive those who believe in him and are looking for his appearing how special are we? We are the most blessed generation of all mankind and all history. So never, ever, ever let Satan or any person take your crown, brothers and sisters. The promise is sure. And you are the most blessed of all generations. Okay, you're going you're gonna to have many that are going to come in my name and say that I am Christ but they're going to deceive many. And that has happened ex exponentially since 2020. There is so many p people and uh, preaching and teaching the gospel, saying that Jesus Christ is Christ, right? But they have a deceptive message. 
like the message of uh, preterism or whatever it's called, where they said all this stuff is fulfilled and we're actually living in the thousand year reign, millennial reign. What a load of garbage. I'm just going to call it like it is. And I don't mean to be offensive to people, but we have to stand up for the truth. This is in by no means the millennial reign, brothers and sisters. We are not ruling and reigning with Yeshua Jesus Christ with a rod of iron where the wicked stand underneath our feet. Absolutely not. This is not paradise on earth. This is the, the millennial reign when we rule and reign with Christ. That is our one of our rewards for being faithful and patient on this life, on this earth, on this test. It's because everybody who oppressed us on this earth throughout history, that is going to be their part of their punishment, is that now they're going to serve under us. And we are going to rule and reign with Christ, the rightful king. And they are going to come and serve us. That is one of their punishments, brothers and sisters. That is definitely not going on right now. We are still under the oppression of the enemy and we will be so until Father sends his son to come and grab us and snatch us and help us escape and redeem us out of here. Okay, but until that time, there's going to come many deceptive doctrines, many, many, many deceptive doctrines that sound, that have the hint of truth in it, that, that sound good, but are so wicked and so evil and so um, for the agenda of making you complacent, for you to say, Oh, well, if, if this has already happened and we're living in the, the millennial reign, then, you know, I'm just going to go about, you know, just go about my life and whatever. We are explicitly told by Christ, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, that if, if I come back and find you not watching, the day will overtake you. Okay. But if you're watching and being a good man of the house and being the candlestick of the, the house and giving your household meat in due season and saying, this is the season of the Messiah's return. Because we've been faithful, we've been watching, we've been searching the scriptures day and night. And Father has promised us. He said, I will do nothing unless I tell you first. Nothing. He told Noah. He told Noah that he was perfect in his generation. Why was Noah perfect? Not because of any other reason except for Noah had the faith in what Father's word said. And he listened to Father. And that is why Noah was found perfect in his generation. It was his faith. And it was the fact that he didn't go and um, go down the sinful road of all the evil and wickedness that was going on in his time. And this is why we're a peculiar people right now. This is why a lot of us are alone. This is why a lot of us don't have family members or friends or anything that, you know, because they're off in the world. They're occupying their time with worldly things. And it says that they will overcome you if you're occupying yourself with worldly things. A lot of people are going to call on Christ too. They're going to say, Lord, Lord, didn't I do all this in your name? I told you I was a Christian. I went to church every, every Sunday. You know, I told people I was a Christian, but what did you do in the other 98% of your life? Did you go clubbing? Did you, uh, you know, um, let's be real here, brothers and sisters. We can't, you know, there's a scripture there. It says some people you need to be gentle with, right? And there's other people you need to rip out of the fire to save them from hellfire. We are at that point now where we can't be all fluffy puffy anymore and worry about being offensive we're talking about eternal life here one way or the other whether it's in heaven for everlasting with the almighty god being reconciled back to the father again through his son and having eternal peace and happiness and and just things that are uncomprehendable we're going to have such a beautiful it's it, there's no words to even express of the joy that we're about to go into or do you want the other side, which is also for eternity, of evil, wickedness, coldness, darkness, a complete separation from the Almighty God, and never, ever, 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 ever a chance again to receive His grace and mercy? 
this we have to be for real here, brothers and sisters. You, anyone can claim with their head that they believe in Christ and that they're a Christian. But if they do not accept Jesus Christ into their heart as Lord and Saviour, then that is, that is the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Is the rejection of Father's gift. Because remember when Christ, before Christ ascended, he said, wait here in Jerusalem for in a few days, uh, my Father, my Father will send you a gift. Okay? My Father will send you a gift. And that gift was the Holy Spirit. Okay? And that Holy Spirit was the most beautiful gift any man could ever receive because that and that alone is our teacher okay that alone the holy spirit the living spirit of the almighty god resides within us the temples that are made with no hands and that's why it says don't quench the spirit and um don't suffer the spirit right you don't want to quench the spirit, the spirit inside you, which is the spirit of the living God. It constantly wants to praise the father. It constantly wants to praise the father. And by you quenching it by every, every time, you know, there's an opportunity for you to share the gospel or for you to talk about God's good grace and how good God is. And you don't, that is quenching the spirit. All right. And eventually that voice becomes quieter and softer and less often until it's until it's gone brothers and sisters please the time is now you must realize that um you know look put this in your mind imagine christ standing before the father when it's your time it's your time to stand before the throne you know the great right white throne judgment and it's your turn and then Christ is he goes to stand before you to cover you in the blood of um, to cover you in the blood of Christ right but then he looks and then he's like did you ever really stand for me ever that's that's how it is brothers and sisters if you don't stand for Christ right now you know, I have people saying, oh, but my friends, you know, they're going to, they, they think I'm crazy and they think I'm stupid. So I just don't want to talk to them about them anymore. That's not our concern. That is not our concern. Our concern is that we represent Yeshua Jesus Christ on this earth. We are his attorneys. We are his lawyers. We are his representatives. If we don't do it, who will? The devil has a billion representatives and they're doing a real good job on their cause. What are we doing? For the one that actually saved us, without him we'd be a, we wouldn't even be here at the moment. So um, we need to really, really get real with this, brothers and sisters. We need to get real with this. Okay, um... And, and just so that people realize, works without faith is dead and faith without works is dead. And, you know, so many people are like, oh, which one is it then? Is it faith or works? It's actually both. And the reason it's both is because if you truly believe with your heart and soul that Christ did this on the cross for you and that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God, then there'd be something terribly wrong if you didn't by default do the things that God loves. If you truly believe that Christ died this horrific, painful, tormented death where he was rejected, spat on, whipped, hung onto a cross and had the most horrendous death, the crucifixion that could ever be known to man, if you truly believe that, that he did that for you, what is, what is us saying to our friends, you know, standing up for Christ and standing up to the Father and losing everything on this earth, losing our family, our friends, our children, our brothers, our sisters for us standing for Christ? 
Because when that day comes, when Christ is going to stand for you, you're going to want to wish that every opportunity you ever had to stand for Christ, you were standing strong. You were standing on that rock. But remember, it's never too late until it is too late. So do, do something today, brothers and sisters. Tell someone today. We have an opportunity right now with everything that's going on in the world. Um, you know, download something onto your phone, a clip to show, you know, in five minutes, the atrocities that are going over on, in, in Israel. Okay, so that you have that on your phone. You don't need to worry about the Internet. Just download it so you have it on your phone. And then when you have the opportunity to talk to your neighbor, to talk to a stranger on the street, you can pull out your phone and say, did you realize that this war is going on and this is actually predicted in the word of God? And when we see these things happening, that we know that Jesus Christ's return is very imminent. And I wanted to show you this today because God loves you. And he wanted me to tell you this, that his son is coming back very, very shortly because, because the in the future, it is going to be the worst time in history. And I don't want you to be here for that. All you have to do is accept Christ into your heart as your Lord and Saviour today. And today you will be in paradise with him. You know, tell them about the thief on the cross, the story. You know, because a lot of people think, oh, the sins that I've done, you know, God's not going to want me. He doesn't want me, whatever. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter if you've murdered someone, if you've committed the most atrocious crimes. Today is the day of your salvation, brothers and sisters, and we need to let pe people know this before it's too late. And there is a time coming, and I truly believe that this time coming, um, it's going to wake a lot of people up. It's going to wake a lot of people up. But um, I truly believe this is why we need the Great Tribulation now. And that's why I believe we're in the Great Tribulation now. We're not in the wrath and the vengeance. Okay, and I'll show you that. We're going to get to that in Luke chapter 21. I'll show you that immediately when we are um, redeemed and raptured out of here, then it says instantly, the same moment we're out, instantly the vengeance, distress and wrath upon the people happens. We are not appointed to that. It's, it's like a we go up, he comes, the devil comes down type of a scenario. Or the devil comes down, we go up type of a scenario. It's literally like that in the twinkling of an eye. Immediately in the spirit. Okay, so we'll continue on here. I've got a feeling this is going to be a very long video. <laughs> okay, so we're going to hear wars and rumors of wars. You know, see this, this kind of thing too, like I was telling... Um, you know, I'm telling my mum, I rang her up and told her about the, uh, you know, the jihad that's supposed to be happening today on Friday, about how there's the Muslim call for a global call for all Muslims to, you know, commit jihad and, um, you know, sacrifice their, their blood and their souls for the, the, you know, for the mission of the G, uh, you know, the jihad and all that. And mum's still like, oh, but Becky, we still, you know, it says there when we hear of wars and rumours of wars, it says that, you know, these things are not yet. And I'm like, are you kidding me? We've literally heard of rumours of wars and seen wars now for centuries. And what have we seen since 2020? We have seen it with our eyes, the Russia and Ukraine war, right? And um, the Middle East war has always been going on, but never like this, brothers and sisters, never on a scale like this. It's even been presented as um, a more worse atrocity than the time of the Holocaust. This is the time, brothers and sisters. This is what it was spoken of in the word of God when it said, when you see the armies surrounding Jerusalem, then you know Jerusalem's destruction is near. Jerusalem's destruction, brothers and sisters, is because of God's people, the Israelites, 
they have rejected God. They have rejected him. They've turned away from him. They've gone to Babylon and to, to traditions and they had their own feasts and their own way of doing things. They're doing things and sacrificing uh, things to idols. Like on the Feast of um, the Day of Atonement, they'll, they'll bake honey cakes, right? This is exactly what Jeremiah talked about in um, Jeremiah 44. They were baking cakes to the Queen of Heaven. And God absolutely attests that. Nowhere in the Bible did God say, I want you to bake cakes for me. Okay, he told you, he gave you an explicit, explicit instruction in Leviticus 23 that um, every Passover, every Feast of Weeks, and every Tabernacles, you are. it's mandatory that you come up to Jerusalem and celebrate with me. Okay? But the the people, they don't want to do that. God's children didn't want to do that. The Israelites didn't want to do that. There is a small remnant few that still honor him with their mouth and their heart. But the majority, the majority are wicked and evil within their heart and stiff-necked. And they're clinging on the, to, that, to that tradition. And through that tradition, this is why that um, father gave over the promise he took it away from them and gave it to us okay it's the it's the um the wedding parable okay father the king he wanted to make a marriage for his son and everything was ready everything was ready to go see that how many times were the, his people told the promised land is right there it's all ready for you all you have to do is have faith and i will fight for you and what did they do 10 people out of the 12 came back with a bad report and said oh no we can't do it we can't do it the people there are too big and um but we can see the milk and honey there we can see all the goodness in there but it's too it's too scary god wouldn't be able to take that down are you serious are you serious, brothers and sisters? But, you know, this is the reality of where we are at the moment. And it's because it was removed and taken from those children and given to the Gentiles. We we have been blessed because of their, their stiff neck and their cold hearts. But this time of trouble that we're about to enter into, this is not the Great Tribulation. The Great Tribulation is right now, brothers and sisters, and it probably get pretty full on this weekend I would say with everything that's going down I'd say that is going to be the the um, the absolute pushing out of the baby and that is the most uh, a sister had wrote on a comment and it's so true this is why Christ always refers to it as a labor when you are giving birth right before you give birth there's this thing called the ring of fire it's when the baby's head is coming out. It is extremely painful, as you could imagine, right? And that is called the ring of fire. The midwives even call it that. This solar eclipse is called the ring of fire. And, um, you know, but right when there's such a relief, when that baby finally gets pushed through that massively painful part, Right, and then everything's wonderful. The the pain, yeah, is there, but very very slight. Like the the holding that newborn baby in your arms, seeing the life that has been given to you, uh, the pain goes. And this is why it says, "Father will wipe away every tear from from their eye." And where does, what does it say in Revelation? Um, you know, in Revelation seven. It tells us, brothers and sisters, it says down here, After this I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number, of all the nations and kindred of people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Brothers and sisters, again, this great multitude which no man can number is the promise Father gave to Abraham. He said, Abraham, can you number the stars in the sky and the dust on the ground? That is the amount of descendants you're going to have. This, brothers and sisters, is what's written in Thessalonians. 
where it says the dead in Christ. Okay, that is all those since Christ. The dead in Christ shall rise. And um, and and us who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them into the air to be with Jesus and be forever with him. Okay. This will be f he'll we will be forever with him. This is one big massive without a number rapture that's going to happen. And when we go down to verse 14 uh, 13 it says where did these people come from? And it says uh, these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Um, therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple and he that sits on the throne shall dwell among them they shall hunger no more they shall thirst no more neither shall the sun light on them nor any heat this brothers and sisters this is exactly telling you where these people came from this multitude from um, from the time of Christ okay from the time of Christ because we've got to remember that in Matthew 27, um, all the people prior to Christ, okay, in Matthew 27, it says here, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yield up the ghost, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom, and the earth did quake and the rocks rent. The graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. And came out of the grave after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many. So we have a couple of beautiful things here. Okay, When Jesus cried out and gave his last breath, the veil of the temple where uh, the normal people weren't allowed to enter into the holies of holies. Okay, That was rent in two. And that means we are now, because of what the Son did, we can now enter into the Holy of Holies and have communion with God, the Almighty Father. This is why he gave us his spirit. It's kind of like a communication device. And, and it's personal. This is why we don't have to go to a priest and we don't have to get intercession from any man on this earth. It is the Son Okay, from what he did, he is the um, intermediate between the Father and us. And because of the great gift that when Yeshua went back to heaven, he said, wait here, my Father's got a gift for you. Okay, and that gift was the Holy Spirit. But notice here, brothers and sisters, that when he had, um, had his last breath, there was an earthquake. Okay, these things are absolutely going to repeat. Now, um, the ring of fire, the eclipse, again, brothers and sisters, you have to be more open-minded than to what we have been taught in history, okay? What the church fathers taught us, what the Pharisees and the Sadducees taught us. Again, I'll give you a perfect example that the slither of the moon is nowhere in the whole Bible. Nowhere are we to say, all right, we see the slither of a moon. This must be the first day of whatever month. Okay. Um, I've said before many times that it makes sense because Father is not a God of confusion, right? When he first created the sun and the moon, he made them as two great lights. When you make something, that is, um, that is, that is its first day. It's new creation. So everywhere where you're reading new moon, that is a full moon, brothers and sisters. And you can read that when, um, you know, the um, Proverbs 7, where it says the, long, the good man of the house went on a long journey and he's coming back. His rewards are with him on the full, on the full moon, right? There's a few uh, scriptures that will say new moon, but the majority of them say full moon. And um, so the point I'm trying to make here, brothers and sisters, is everything that we've been told, remember the Jews, okay? And a lot of, the, not, I'm not talking about the innocent people here. I'm talking about the Pharisees and Sadducees that have come through history. They don't want us. They think that we are cattle, okay? We are nothing to them. 
they hate us with a passion. So what is the best way to do uh, to confuse us is to put everything back the front, inside out, black versus white, white versus black, inside out, right way around, whatever it may be, okay? So while they've got the world looking for the Babylonian slither of the moon, um, realistically, the full abundant moon should be the first day of every month, which makes much more sense when you think about the fact that, um, you know, even that 2,000, 4,000 years ago, they didn't have any telescopes or anything like that. You could tell no matter rain, hail or shine, brothers and sisters, that when there was a full moon, you knew it was the first day of the new month. Whereas when you're trying to look for the slither, if it was cloudy, if it was this, if it was that, and you weren't able to spot it, then what, two, three days until they could spot it, then they would start the new month? No, God is not a God of confusion. He made the new abundant moon I want to sneeze in a sec. <laughs> he made the beautiful new fully abundant moon as a sign for the first day. Um, you know, the first day of, of full light, that is the first day of the month. And that makes so much more sense when you look at what happened at Christ on the cross. Okay? It was very obvious that the 15th day of the month where the Jews are showing us it's a full moon, is actually a dark concealed moon. Okay, a dark concealed moon. And this is probably why it, the whole thing is no man will know the day or the hour, even though that verse is referring to the day the heavens and earth pass away. But Christians love to use that verse. It's almost like regurgitation. That's the first verse you'll ever hear. No man knows the day or the hour. But, um, you know, of course they're not going to know when they've swapped the full moon being the first day to the slither of the moon, which is totally from Babylon. And doesn't it make much more sense that it was a complete dark moon when Christ was crucified on the cross? When he died and was punished, of course there was complete darkness. Of course there was complete darkness. Do you ever think that the Jews may have made it a full moon? Because, you know, the... Um, because they want to uh, deceive us from the true times that we're living in. And look, think about this too, that on the original Passover from Exodus, when they had to flee at midnight, okay, because when Father, on the 10th plague, on the death of the firstborns, when Father said, you know, get the lamb, sacrifice it, eat it, and have your staff in hand, your sandals on, eat in haste, because at midnight I'm going to come through and, um, you know, there's going to be a wailing and mourning and everything like that. That was going to be complete darkness. Every day that something like that happens is complete darkness. And it makes sense because when Father led them out of Egypt, he was the light. Not the moon or the sun or anything like that. Father was the light that led them out of Egypt. Okay? And it was, they followed that light. And it was... Um, I hope you understand what I'm saying, brothers and sisters. We have been deceived so much. And don't think for a second that um, the Jews, they, they're not smart enough to do something like this. They don't want us knowing anything. They think they're special, privileged people. They think they have special, wonderful knowledge. Everything that they've told us is so that we get further and further off the track. So when you read here that the earth did quake okay and the graves were open the type and shadow and pattern that's in the bible is such an important part of god's word is he's like continuously telling you right from genesis he says watch this i'm going to repeat this same thing over and over and over in every single book so that you will understand and you will know that when you see these things happen, then you can look up because your redemption door is near. So we have this amazing, very, very, very biblical solar eclipse, which fits perfectly to Matthew 24. Um, immediately after the tribulation of those days. And I just told you, brothers and sisters, we 
live in tribulation if we pick up the cross and we follow Yeshua Jesus Christ we're going to have tribulation and right before the birth of a baby there is great trial and great tribulation okay immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light brothers and sisters God is not a God of confusion this is not some allegory or some um, some magical day when um, you know it's on a full moon or anything like that and God's just going to make the moon go black he is using his elements this makes so much sense and when you again when you call it the ring of fire that this eclipse was and brother Steve Fletcher did videos showing you it was the great Mayan eclipse okay this eclipse hasn't happened in a certain way since the time of the Mayans <laughs> and um, you know the Mayans the Sumerians that, that's from one of the sons of Noah right that's where they all came from and same with the uh, the Asians and the Mongolians and stuff like that I did a whole video in uh, the end of last year all about the sons of Noah um, but this eclipse is extremely extremely you cannot just say this is another eclipse brothers and sisters because of the fact that we now have the army surrounding Jerusalem and we have the people fleeing and um, in my in my video that YouTube took down but I re-uploaded it this morning um, I talked about the fact that a brother had sent me a video to look at and it was the fact that those red heifers will be ready on October the 15th and then we see in, um, what do you call it, in uh, I Pet Goat, we see the Dome of the Rock because it's got the crescent moon thing above that dome, right? It gets destroyed. And all they need for the, um, the sacrifice of these red heifers to, because that's what they need to do. They need to sacrifice the red heifers and take the ashes of those red heifers to consecrate a new temple. You don't think they have all of this? Why do you think for the last 10 years they have built all of the um, the temple instruments that need to go in there, the show table, you know, all of the stuff, that the menorah, everything that needs to go into the temple, that is ready to go at a moment's notice. And as I showed you the picture, <coughs> pardon me, as I showed you the picture um, that was in this particular video talking about the red heifers they just had a flat altar okay it was just on a flat ground there was no temple yet because they have to sacrifice this uh, red heifer to get the ashes to to start to dedicate the temple right so the timing on this is like so precise you couldn't make this up and if anybody on this earth any Christian wants to say that the things, you know, we need to see more stuff first. What are you waiting for, brothers and sisters? What are you waiting for? Are you waiting for Yeshua Jesus Christ to appear and then and say, see ya, wouldn't want to be ya, and then go, whoops, maybe I should have listened. Don't leave it too long. This is about to go down, brothers and sisters. There is nothing more on this earth that I can stress enough than our time is now. This is happening now. And, it, and, and the biggest thing about this all is that it has to happen in the times like Noah. No one in their right mind or even um, mathematically will be eating and drinking, and marrying and giving in marriage and planting and building when we're going through the worst time in history where people's heart will be having heart attacks because of what's coming onto the earth, the wrath of God and the vengeance of God, no one's going to be planting and building and drinking and marrying and, and giving in marriage and doing all that stuff. No, brothers and sisters, it has to come now because that's why Christ said, watch, 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 watch. If you don't watch, I'm going to come, it's going to come on you like a thief in the night. And you're going to be overtaken and there's going to be the door's going to be shut and there's going to be wailing and gnashing of teeth in outer darkness 
he doesn't come post tribulation or post wrath right at the end he doesn't just come grab us we go up there and then we turn around and come riding on, on white horses and that's the second coming brothers and sisters that's ridiculous he comes at the 11th hour and the 59th minute oh my goodness wow i have said that for years that he's going to come at the 11th hour and the 59th minute and that brothers and sisters look at this that is exactly when this um oh my goodness praise the lord exactly when this eclipse will be going over corpus christi at 11 58 okay maximum the maximum eclipse at corpus christi right right here before it goes over into uh, mexico and that um will be will happen at 11 58 a.m and i've always said that father will come at you know a minute to midnight a minute to midnight or a minute to midday midday midnight he said he's going to make the sun go down at noon and he's going to make the whole earth dark in clear day how many like how brilliant is this people love eclipses they love solar eclipses a lot more than lunar okay because the solar eclipse is when people are awake people are, you know they they flock they flock to these um places of uh what do you call it visibility you see with all the big huge eclipses before they're there by the thousands you know they travel there from other places to see because with the lunar eclipse you just watch it on your computer right but with the solar eclipse people literally travel for miles and camp at these places to witness solar eclipses what better way than for father to make the whole world aware i told you to look up i told you to watch so literally by default and by force people will already be looking up the whole world is going to see this brothers and sisters and this is exactly why they're trying so hard so hard to to uh to deceive us with some other scenario that they're going to put across that you know aliens or whatever that's not going to work that's not going to work brothers and sisters this is it has to happen now the time is now brothers and sisters the time is now i'm going to make the sun go down at noon and it's going to be darkness over the whole earth in clear day immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven the stars brothers uh, brothers and sisters they've been talked about in revelation the stars represent angels okay the angels will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven which are the princes and principalities of the air they're going to be shaken they have to be cast down they go down we go up what is the very next thing after the sun being darkened and the moon not giving her light and then shall appear the sign of the son of man of heaven right oh my goodness what if what if it is oh i'm just overwhelmed at the moment what if it, brothers and sisters this is this could be 24 hours away it's 11 um i mean i know it's 14 hours um you know i'm i'm ahead so for me it's going to be i don't know sometime like 4 a.m in the morning but um I'm, i mean i'm gonna put my alarm on for sure i'm definitely gonna be up i want to be up I, want, I don't want to be the two in the bed I want to be taken want to be left i want to be standing outside but imagine this brothers and sisters and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven when everyone's looking up <laughs> I'm so overwhelmed. This is, I cannot fathom that we are here, brothers and sisters. Everybody will be looking up. 
This is why the sign is in the, in the heavens. The Son of Man will literally appear in the heavens when everybody's looking up. When he has asked for so long, for so many years, for us to look up and wait for his, the appearing of his beautiful Son, Yeshua Jesus Christ. And now, by default, humanity will be looking up. And this is why all the tribes of the earth <laughs> and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and great glory. <laughs> no wonder they're going to mourn. This is going to be horrific for them. And then he shall send the angels with a great sound of a trumpet, with the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God. And those that are dead in Christ shall rise first, and us who are alive and remain shall be caught up together. From the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other, a multitude that no man can number of every nation, tribe, tongue and people. Immediately in the spirit, in the twinkling of an eye. The whole world is going to see this, brothers and sisters. The great sound of a trumpet, this is why it doesn't matter in what time zone you live. It doesn't matter in what, where you are in darkness or in, in um, daytime. There's going to be a great sound of a trumpet. It's going to be a trumpet for us that are looking for his appearing. But it's going to be thunder and lightning so loud and so horrific. It's going to shake and that's going to be, that's going to cause the earthquake. The earthquake has to happen, brothers and sisters. It has to happen just like it did on Christ's time, okay, when he took his breath. The earthquake, the earth did quake and the rocks rent. That needs to happen because what happens right after that, the graves will open. This is going to be a repeat, a repeat. The sun and the moon shall be darkened. There's going to be a great earthquake that's going to crack open the graves and the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven for the whole world. This is why it says, every eye will see him, even those that pierced him. The graves are cracking open, brothers and sisters. We read in Daniel 12 that, you know, many of them that sleep in the dust shall awake. Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life. That's the dead in Christ. And some to shame and everlasting contempt. Everybody will be risen, brothers and sisters, because just as it is not fair for those that love Christ and has been looking for him to go through any of this wrath, the same is it's not fair that any of these wicked people that have lived throughout history will not go through the worst time of history. God is good. God is just. These people are awoken and risen from their graves, these wicked people, and they will now experience the worst time of history that ever was and ever will be. And this is why men's hearts will faint with fear on what's coming on this earth. And this is why every eye will see him, even those that pierced him. The people who put the spear in the side of our Messiah will be awakened and risen to witness this is truly the Son of God. This is unbelievable, brothers and sisters. Unbelievable. So, again, I want to want to reiterate but of that day, no man knows, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, and remember, father told Noah, he told him seven days before. We got the same morning on October the 7th when the war started. Father told us, for those that are listening, he told us, this is your seven day warning so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For in the days that were before the flood, that's before the destruction, they were eating and they were drinking and they were marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. 
and this is very important, and they knew not until the flood came. The door didn't get shut on the ark, brothers and sisters, and the water started to come down. No. Noah was in there, safe and sound, for seven days. And they're down there being wicked and debaucherous and, and, you know, committing all sorts of sins and laughing and drinking and eating and, you know, living life as per normal. Living in a sense of peace and safety because that old man on the hill there building that boat, he's finally quiet. Yay, we don't have to listen to his rantings and, and warnings and, you know, asking us to repent. And then the flood came and took them all away. What does it say here? Then two shall be in the field. One will be taken, one will be left. Two will be in the field. They're working, brothers and sisters. They're working like in the days of Noah. No one will be working when you're running from your life, when you're running for your life from the reign of the Antichrist. Okay, two women will be grinding at the mill. That's like um, a baker, right? Because this is giving you different time zones. The field is in, in at noon. Okay, they're working at the field. Um, women grinding at the mill, that's a baker. They're usually at, at dawn, right? If they start making the bread around 3 a.m. in the morning. Um, and then it goes into chap in Luke. Luke 17, it says there's going to be two people sleeping in one bed. And one will be taken, one will be left. That's for people like me in Australia. That will be at night time. But he's telling you it's all going to be at the same time. Watch, watch, watch therefore. For ye know not what hour your Lord comes. But, again with the buts. Remember, that day and hour knows no man. But, watch therefore. Because you don't know what hour your Lord comes. But, know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come and how how is a good man of the house supposed to know if we're not supposed to know because father speaks in uh, he, he wrote this book in parables like jesus said he wrote the book in parables so that the the foolish wouldn't understand they think it's just gibberish but the wise would understand if you had watched you would not have suffered your house to be broken up. Okay, so by default, if you're not watching, your house will be broken up. Therefore, please also be ready for in an hour such as you think not the Son of Man cometh. I mean, there's so many videos already coming out. Um, this always happens. You get these Christians that come on and they're like, no, 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 all this stuff, this rapture's not real. It's from a little girl in the 1800s. Um, you know, we've got to go through all of this stuff. We're not even close. We're just at the beginning now. That is not meat in due season. Meat in due season is to say, wake up, wake up, wake up. The time is now. Everything the Father has written in his word, everything his Son told us to watch for is here. The time is here. Blessed is that servant whom when his Lord, when he comes, shall find him doing. What? Find him what doing? Watching and waiting. Not preoccupying with life and going to college and going to school and going to work and, and um, make, you know, thinking about what clothes you're going to be wearing tomorrow and and whether you're going to be going out to eat and dinner on the weekends and stuff like that. There's no time for this anymore, brothers and sisters. We have eternity that we're talking about right now. Like I said in my other video, I left my job this week because there's an overwhelming feeling that I've got to spend nothing, no other time with any worldly things except for being in the Word of God and bringing my brothers and sisters encouragement. There's nothing for me in this world except to be the mother of my children and to bring them up in the Lord and for them they have a great excitement they know it's a very high possibility that we'll be in heaven very very soon and they also know that I their mum am only human and I have said this to them before you know that it's a good possibility that rapture is going to happen and then it comes and goes they are well aware but they're also aware 
that I'm being faithful to watch. And I'm just excited. And they're excited. My own children do not fear. And that's one of my biggest accomplishments as a mum. Is that I brought them up in the way of the Lord. And for them not to fear. And for them to set their sights on the return of Jesus Christ. My two eldest boys... I know they believe, I know they believe, well, no one knows really what people believe, but I did teach them and I baptised them and um, I always used to call my son, who's 23 now, but when he was like 15 or 16, he was my little rapture, rapture sidekick, you know, he used to watch these days with me and we used to do these studies together and work out these riddles together, so he has it in him, he knows And um, all we can do is trust. Like I said in my last video, do not be like Lot's wife. You trust the Father. Whatever the Father has in store for each and every one of us is the right thing. And this is why you do not look back. You do not look for your children. You do not look for your pets. You do not look for your husband, your wife, your brothers, your sisters, your children or anybody. Because remember, utmost and foremost, that Father is a father of love and he is our Abba Papa there is nothing in this world that he would not do he gave his only begotten son for us brothers and sisters remember that always remember that if he's going to do that there's nothing he would stop at than to bring us home all together he knows how much we love before we even ask him prayer about our, our children and that you know and again I wanted to, to talk to you about um the next chapter, Matthew 25, um, you know, we have the, the parables of the ten virgins, right? Um, it might be, might be 6, 26. Let's have a quick look. Matthew 22, the parable of the wedding. Okay, this is such an important, um, actually I want to go to this parable in the book of Luke. Um, okay, Luke 22 starting at 7. And he put forth the parable to those which were bidden, so those that were called. When he marked how they chose out of the chief room, saying unto them, When you are bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not in the highest room, least a more honourable man than you be bidden of him. Okay, that's not the one, but still very important. Um, okay, starting at 16. And then he said unto him, A certain man... Okay, and in Matthew it talks about a king, which so this certain man is referring to the Almighty God the Father. Okay, and he made a wedding for his son. A certain man made a great supper and bade many. He sent his servants at the supper time to say to them that were bidden or chosen, meaning his people, the Israelites, Come, for all things are now ready. Okay, just the same with the promised land. The promised land's been ready for ages and they kept making the excuses that they didn't want to go in. The father's like, right, I'll give it to someone else then. Okay, and they all with one consent. Now, this is the thing that blows my mind. Why? Father's like, hey, I've got everything, the best of the best for you. And then these people with one consent began to make excuse. The first one said unto him, oh, I've bought a piece of ground and I must go and tend to it. And I pray that you can have me excused. And another said, oh, look, I've bought five oxen, a yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I've got to go look after these oxen that I bought and I pray that I can have an excuse. And another said, hey, look, I've just married my wife and therefore I cannot come. So this is putting family, family before the father, okay? This is putting animals before the father. And this is putting um, 
you know, material things before the Father. All excuses. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. He told the King, the Father, or the Almighty God, he said, Hey, these people that you've invited to the wedding of your son, they've got all these excuses. One's married, one's got this, uh, he bought some oxen, and the other one, you know, he just bought some land. And they've all got excuses, they don't want to come. Then the master of the house, the master of the house, the almighty God began to be very angry. And he said to his servants, go out quickly onto the streets and to the lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as you have commanded. And yet there is room. Okay, there's room. There's room with all the poor, the maimed, the blind and all in all the lane ways of the city, but there's still room. And the Lord said to the servant, Go out then to the highways and the hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you, None of those men which were chosen, none of my children, the Israelites which I asked, and I prepared everything for them, none of them which were bidden shall taste of my supper. And there was a great multitude with him, and he turned and he said to them, If any man come to me and hate not his father and his mother and his wife and his children and his brethren and his sisters, ye, and also his own life, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost, whether you have enough to finish it? Okay, we ha- the, the cost of following Yeshua Jesus Christ is high, brothers and sisters, but it is so worth it, particularly because we are the last. Okay, we're the last in the field of this whole generation. We're the last in the field. We've only done a small, a small um, hours of work. Some people have been, you know, they've been here from the beginning, not... Um, you know of the generation they're old now a lot of us have only done a few hours of work but we still get the same inheritance but the 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 point I'm trying to make here brothers and sisters is that um, because of Israel father's children rejecting to come to the wedding Um, the door has been opened to all of us and this is beautiful this is wonderful but whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple so this is also very important to remember brothers and sisters you want Jesus to stand for you you must stand for him while we still have time so we're going to go to Luke 21 and we're going to see here again Um, you know we we have here that in Matthew and Mark it says you know there's going to be earthquakes in diverse places and famines and pestilence and fearful sights Uh, sorry there's just going to be earthquakes and and, um, famine and pestilence right and these are the beginning of sorrows but in Luke it says there's going to be great earthquakes there shall be in diverse places and famine and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs shall come shall there be from heaven okay what do you think is the fearful sight and the great sign that's going to come from heaven we already read that in Matthew 24 right in Matthew 24 it says um that um, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun and moon shall be darkened, right? And then shall appear the sign of Son of Man in heaven. We've already found out that that's the rapture, brothers and sisters. So this is the fearful sight and the great sign, the great sign that's coming from heaven. But before all these, okay, but before the flood, before the flood that comes and takes them all the way, 
Before all these, they shall lay, lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prison, being brought before the kings and the rulers for my name's sake. Remember I told you that in Matthew it says they will bring you up to afflict you and kill you. In Mark it says they'll beat you. But for us, the church, they're going to put their hands on us and persecute us, okay, by bringing us up to the courts and everything like this. This has already happened, brothers and sisters. For those who stood valiantly for the Lord and said, no, we are not taking these jibber jabs. We're going to stand up for the, for, the, um, for the goodness of God. And God made us perfect in our creation. Okay, and we're not taking this because it will pollute the century, um, the holy century. And we stood up and we were taken into prisons and we were given fines and we had to speak. And that says they're going to turn to you for a testimony. How many beautiful testimonies were given? Unfortunately, at the sake of um, many people were maimed and injured because of the lie that was the jibby jab. But they stood before the courts and they stood on God's word. And they, the whole world heard this. The whole, a lot of the world woke up to the fact that this was prophesied long, long time ago. Okay, settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before uh, what you shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom. Okay, notice because in Matthew and Mark it says I'm going to give you the spirit. And the Spirit's going to talk to you, you know, speak for you. But we've already got the Holy Spirit. So we get given a mouth of wisdom. Okay? That your adversaries cannot be able to gainsay nor resist. There's nothing they could say against the powerful words that were going to come out of our mouths. Of those people who were fined and persecuted for the mandates and everything like that. And that stood up, the doctors that came out, the whistleblowers, the people from all the, the evil walks of life where they came out of her, my people, and they stood up and they said, this is something very, very wrong. They were given mouths of wisdom to speak incredible words and they woke many people up to the deception of the enemy. And then they were betrayed. A lot of people were betrayed by both parents, their uh, brethren, you know, their, their people around them that they worked with, their kinsfolks and their friends. And some of them they shall cause to be put to death. Okay, the people who spoke up too much, the whistleblowers who said too much, they were caused to be put to death. Okay, you're going to be hated of all men for my name's sake. Okay, no one wants to hear that they're sinning or that they're... they're um, you know, that they're going to go to hell or anything like that. No one wants to hear that. So that, that's why we're hated of all men for Christ's sake. But what's promised? Not a hair on your head shall perish. In your patience possesses you your soul. And now we're coming to today. When you see the Jerusalem surrounded with armies and you know the desolation or destruction, which it talks about in Daniel 9, it said in Daniel 9, verse 2, it said, I, I, Daniel, understood by the books that the destruction and desolation of Jerusalem was going to be 70 years. Okay, he already understood that in verse 2. So the 70 weeks represented the 70 years. Okay, and you can, and it, it matches absolutely perfectly the 70 years. When you put it alongside of when Princess Elizabeth became Queen Elizabeth in 1953, on the 2nd of June, 1953, because regardless of whether she was or wasn't, she was the symbol of um, the protection of the Protestant faith. She was the protection of the good news of the gospel. I'm not talking about whether the Queen was a good person or not, but her what, she, what the Queen represented was when the, everybody fled out of the persecutions of the Roman Catholic Church. Okay, This is where the Protestant Reformation came, right? And the Queen was supposed to represent the protection of the good news of the Gospel, of the salvation. Right? And when you watch her coronation on the 2nd of June 1953, you'll see that um, it was very godly. 
everything was done in the open everything was done um lots of uh the bible was spoken of it was it was a very um um it was coronation it was a godly coronation okay um everything was under god and she swore allegiance to the people that she would work for the people under the almighty god then you fast forward exactly 70 years later okay and then you have her son prince charles being coronated as the king and the evilness that was encompassed in that coronation was out of this world not only did he um he was anointed with the um the olives from the mount of olives the oil okay which was consecrated by rabbi priests goodness knows what kind of ritual whatever that was done on that but when he um was anointed because that's part of the process right um Whereas the queen, she went down to a white robe and she was anointed with the oil in front of the public. Everybody saw this. Okay, everyone could hear what was said. But Charles, he went behind this makeshift enclosed room, right? And no one saw what he did when he was anointed with this oil. Um, and there was music playing and every and people talking and carrying on. No one heard what this man said or what he pledged his allegiance to. And it was done behind darkness, enclosed walls. And mind you, on one of those makeshift walls was a picture of a tree with 53 apples on it, representing the, all the Commonwealth nations. And then there was a banner at the bottom that was an exact replica, re, replica of a snake okay the serpent in the garden on the tree of good and evil and there's so much more i've done so many videos on a child's being um you know one of the heads I, it, it doesn't really matter anymore who you know we're going to stop fighting that no it's it's obama no it's trump no it's king charles who gives a flying crap who it is they're all um different heads of the same snake they're all working to bring about the power of the antichrist the power of the beast the destruction of this world they're all bringing down many many people's souls into hell that's their main agenda okay but the big thing with prince uh, king charles is the monarchy and they have been very clear in saying that they have the eternal right to forever hold the throne of David and the Queen and Charles they have stated very clearly that they are in the lineage of King David and that Father God promised in the word that David's throne would always have a king or a queen on it this is why it's so significant and the fact that um, Charles was um well he is an architect he loves architecture he has literally been building a new jerusalem in in um the uk in the united kingdom okay the the name itself united kingdom i was just wow that's a bit of a revelation there um but you know he loves everything and this is why the freemasons and the the knights templar and all of that stuff comes from that area right and it is very well known that um they occupied israel okay prior to 1948 and then when 1948 came and israel became a nation they um you know they left israel but now the jews want to come back into that commonwealth because they want charles as a king because charles has always told them that he wants to rebuild solomon's third temple okay so the jews want him they will they will crown him as king if they're going to give him a temple that's what they want so it doesn't really matter who's doing what or who's saying what if you see massive players it is our job as watchmen and watchwomen to say beware of these people okay beware of these people because once we're gone and we're left and the voice of the bridegroom is gone there will be no more warnings there will be no more um discernment or wisdom left and people are just going to be overrun by deception 
So if we don't do our job now and say these, this person's a candidate, this person's a candidate, this person's a candidate, without other Christians going, um, oh, you don't know the word of God, you're not reading it properly, This it's purely this one, it says this one, and if you see other things, then you know you don't see the word of God. That's ridiculous. This is Satan's greatest tactic is to have us being divisive with each other. Okay, he, he tries this tactic all over the world. Okay, and you can see up here in Luke 21 too, one of his tactics um, it says here, um, then you'll see nation against nation. Nation comes from the word ethnos, and that's where we get the word ethnicity from. So in other words, it means race against race. And did this not happen? in the last three years with the Black Lives Matter. They tried to divide us, even, um, you know, black versus white, which never works, brothers and sisters. You have your small minority that love this crap, but the majority of us, we love each other, no matter what race or nation or tongue or tribe we come from. We are all God's children, but this is the work of the enemy. It's to divide us because a divided nation will fall. He knows this. He knows this. Even Christ said, you know, if, if Satan's against Satan, then his kingdom will fall. So if um, God's children are against God's children, then the kingdom will fall. So this is why he has to divide us in all ways possible. And we should stop this. And we should, I would never dream, if I don't agree with somebody um, on a particular subject, um, I would never come, go onto their page and say, oh, you're not hearing from the Father. He's not speaking to you. You know, this is blasphemy, blah, 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 blah. That is, that's between the Father and that person. Okay? It, it's not my job to, con to convict or convince anybody. My job is to plant the seeds of the good news of the gospel and to be a watchwoman on the wall. When I see trouble coming, I am there with the shofar saying, boop, 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 boop. That is my job, okay? It is not my job to say, you're not hearing from God, you're hearing from a demon and, um, you know, it's, it's just ridiculous and it's sad. But by your fruits, you'll know them. You, the people who come and mock and scoff and say that, you know, the listening to the devil and you don't have the light in you and everything like that is, yeah, they don't have the light of Christ in them. That's it's, it's as simple as that. And Jesus Christ himself even said, you know, when his disciples were having a go at that guy for healing people and, and telling people about Jesus, but because this guy wasn't part of the disciple gang, they were like, what's this fella doing using your name and doing all this stuff in your name? And Jesus is like, are you kidding me, mate? Like, seriously, this guy is good. He, what he's doing is good. He's gathering people for my kingdom. Okay, whoever gathers people is with me. Whoever scatters people is not with me. Telling people that they're hearing from demons and that, you know, uh, that they aren't actually walking with God and they're not hearing from God, that is gathering, scatter, scattering people. Okay, so be very careful on uh, what you comment, what you write, because every single word, brothers and sisters, whether you speak it or write it, will be um, will be used as a witness against you. Every word spoken, um, every word written, every deed done, will be either for you or against you. So, um, and this, I suppose, this is why I can't understand why people get so, so, like, it's not even angry, it's like beyond anger, it's like the, the words that people will say, um, I, I'm very open with the fact that I don't believe in the Trinity, I do not believe that, um, you know, and a lot of people will go, what? Because it's like, for some reason, they, I've been very clear on many of my videos, and I will tell you, brothers and sisters, why I do not believe in the Trinity. I do not believe that the Son 
and uh, is, is the Father or that the Yeshua Jesus Christ is the one and only true God. And the reason I do not believe that is because one of the first commandment, okay, let's read it. And I, I want to show you that from scripture, it's not just me trying to go against the grain. I mean, how many hours have you heard me sit here going through scripture after scripture? You know my heart, brothers and sisters. I would not be saying this if I thought for one second I was going to deceive any of you. Okay, we'll go to the, the Ten Commandments. It is the first and foremost. Okay. Though shall have no other gods before me. Thou shall not make unto thee any graven image or likeness of anything that is in heaven above or in the earth beneath or that is in the water underneath. Thou shall not bow thy down uh Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. To who? Anything that's in heaven or in earth or in the waters underneath. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquities of the Father upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. The, 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 the person came up to Christ and said, what is the greatest commandment? And um, the first thing that came out of Yeshua Jesus Christ's mouth was, the Lord thy God is one and only him shall you serve and you shall love him with all your heart, soul and mind. And the second is um, love, um, love your neighbors as yourself. Everything else hangs on these two commandments. Okay. Jesus cannot be God, brothers and sisters, because of the simple fact that if God himself came down to this earth and died on the cross, the world would cease to exist in an instant. God cannot die. God is a spirit. No man has ever seen God. This doctrine has come from the council of Nicaea, like everything wicked in this world, all roads lead back to Rome. Okay, it is from the Roman church, the Roman Empire church with the, the um, Constantine. They got a council together. And do you understand what happened to the people who were against this? Arius. Okay, Arius and two other people uh two other groups of people right they defended the fact that the that yeshua jesus christ was the son of the living god okay and what did the catholic church do to them they exiled them they would hunt them down they would burn their books have we not learned anything in history before brothers and sisters have we not learned anything in history before that whenever the Catholic Church or um, a very high power like that will come for something, want to burn something, want to get rid of you, want to silence you, have we not learnt already that maybe we should have a look at that? This is so important to me, brothers and sisters, and I know it irritates so many people. That when they hear me say this, they think I'm speaking blasphemy. But you you know my heart. I would never dare. And, and brothers and sisters, I quite often thought and wanted to say this. I offer you a, um, a mission. And I stand here. And say to you, I, Rebecca Bowley, before the Almighty God will take on any consequence or any punishment of this being a wrong doctrine, what I'm speaking, that the Trinity is not true, I will take it all upon myself. But please give the people, my brothers and sisters, the freedom to look into this without being indoctrinated from the church fathers to feel like this is something if they look into they're going against you know they're going against your father please give them an open heart an open mind an open spirit to have a look at the beautiful relationship that is 
the heavenly father, a true father, the best father, our Abba Papa, who loved us so much that he gave us his one and only begotten son. God didn't give himself to us, brothers and sisters. How is that fair? How is that even fair that if God came down, made himself into a baby and then grew up, he could have done anything on the cross, brothers and sisters. He could have made it look like he was suffering and it would have been nothing for him. Okay, nothing's a feat for father. But no, this is why the love story is so beautiful and so great. And this is why Satan wants to deceive you with having this Trinity doctrine where the Holy Spirit's even a God. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of the living God given to us as a gift, as a teacher, to teach us in all truth. It's the spirit of the living God. It's, it's not a God itself that should be worshipped. This is the very reason that I actually walked out of a church and never went back into another one. Because when I found this out, I had the pastors come um, to my door with books upon books. None of them were the Bible. They had people flying in to the church to try and convince me that uh, the that Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, they're three gods, but they're one. And it's, anyway, there's a time like no other. And this is why I'm bringing it up now, brothers and sisters, okay? Because usually I'm t I try to be very careful. But I, I do always, I'm never ashamed of it. And I let people know my beliefs. But I'm going to stand up for it now more than ever, than I ever have before. Because I think this is the greatest deception the enemy has ever given. Imagine, brothers and sisters... That Father God said here, the most important thing to him is you'll have nothing else but for me, not even besides me. Okay, don't have any likeness of anything that's in heaven or in the earth beneath and do not bow yourself down to them. Every single church I've ever heard, every uh, Christian song that's ever been written is worship Jesus, worship Jesus. Jesus this, Jesus that. Now, when I speak like this, brothers and sisters, I am in no way trying to demise who Yeshua Jesus Christ is. He sits on the right-hand side of the Father's throne. But the Father is greater than Jesus. Even Jesus Christ himself said this. No one sings about God the Father. No one seems to be giving him glory or honor without saying that they're actually talking about Jesus. Don't you think if this was the, the, a deception that this would have been the biggest deception in the entire world? Because every church that doesn't believe in the Trinity uh, is, is not allowed to call themselves a Christian church. Okay? They don't. Uh, the World Council of Churches has made this as a rule. If you do not have in your statement of beliefs the number one thing of believing in the Trinity, if you do not have that as your number one statement, you are not allowed to be considered a, a, a Christian church. This comes from the mother church, the mother harlot, Rome, which turned into the Roman Catholic Church. Brothers and sisters, please come out of her, my people. I will take all punishments, all consequences onto myself. But please have the open heart, the open mind to figure this stuff out for yourself. You have been told this since birth. You have been brought up that you do not dare even look into this. I don't care if I have one subscriber left. But I need to plant the seed in you that you need to read this for yourself and know who was Yeshua Jesus Christ crying tears of blood to in the garden? He wasn't crying it to himself. It was the Father in heaven that caused the darkness over the whole earth when the evil, wicked people on this earth took his son's life because fathers was grieving so much. This is the love story, brothers and sisters. For you to say that God himself came down and he became Jesus and that God died on the cross, that's not a feat. How God needs to be a human being. 
Yeshua, Jesus Christ, needs to be a human being for this to be fair. For him to have died on the cross, for him to experience all the temptations that a human being would uh, experience, that's nothing. You can't tempt the Father. You cannot tempt the Father, but you can tempt a human being. You need a perfect sacrifice, and that's the reason he was a perfect sacrifice, because he was one of us. And it's, and he still is. You read in um, in Luke, I can't remember which chapter it is, but he presents himself to the disciples, and they freak out because Jesus just walked through the walls, and so they're freaking out thinking they've seen a ghost. And he said, no, look, look, feel me and see that I still have bones and flesh. Just, he says, does a ghost have bones and flesh? Notice he said that he doesn't have any blood anymore because he shed his blood for our, um, you know, for our salvation. But he, he showed himself he's forever going to have the holes in his hands. He's forever going to have flesh and, um, and bones to be the ultimate representation forever, for all generations, for eternity, so that we remember upon this gift that Christ gave. Okay? The, the, Jesus Christ and his Father are completely different. The Father is greater than the Son. And this, to me, brothers and sisters, is the most important thing and, and um, the most cleverest thing that Satan could have done. Everybody has no, never bats an eyelid with all the other evil stuff that's come out of that church, the Catholic Church. The idolatry, the eating things, sacrificed to idols, the constant communion they have, you know, with the, the wafers and the all that kind of stuff. You know, no one bats an eyelid to understand that that's, you know, they know that's evil. But yet this one foundational doctrine, which they say, if you don't believe in it, you're going to go to hell. That should already spark concerns in you. And I'm so glad, Father. Thank you for giving me the courage to speak on this and to have such um, boldness about it. Because so many people, you know, I've had probably in the last couple of years, you know, I could count on my hands how many people wrote, uh, wrote to me and said, you know, that they've actually looked into it and they've just been amazed and so thankful to come out of that. And to realize what a beautiful story this is, is that it literally, just like Abraham was about to offer his son Isaac for the love of God, for God so loved us that he, he actually went through with it and let his son be sacrificed for us. That is the great love story. Not that God himself came down. He could have presented himself as being in pain and, and suffering and everything like that, or the temptations would have been nothing for God. Anyway, so that being said, um, I want to quickly go over to, um, you know, and for those people who are still here that haven't just turned off because they hear me say that and they're like, oh, blasphemy, I'm out of here. Thank you. Thank you for sticking around. And like I said, I'm, I have put my name before the Father and said, you know, let it all fall on me. That's how much faith I have in what the Father's shown me. And this is exactly why I came out of the church system was because of this very doctrine. It's evil beyond all all evils. And you know, and people I know people are gonna come and say, you know, they're gonna throw um, John one you know, that the about the word and and brothers and sisters, a little bit of study and a little bit of looking into it for yourself other than listening to what the people on the pulpit speak and spit out at you. A little bit of studying will show you that the, the word word was never capitalized in the original text. Never. It never meant to be a um, an actual thing. It was the word, word, without a capital W. He wasn't talking about Yeshua, Jesus Christ. And I've been through this before when people say, but it says that Christ created the world and, you know, he created everything in the world. Yes, I totally agree with you because that's in Scripture. For the father loved his son so much that that was his inheritance, was to have complete authority, authority to give, forgive sins, to be, uh, to create all the things and everything like that within the world. 
Absolutely, Yeshua Jesus Christ created this world. Father created the heavens and the earth and the fountains of the deep and he gave life to each and every one of us. But everything else that you see in the world was created by Yeshua Jesus Christ, his son. Okay, it says this in Daniel. It talks about Father called the Ancient of Days and the Son of Man was brought up to the Ancient of Days and the Ancient of Days gave the Son of Man power, blessings, glory, honor, um, you know, the everything God gave to the Son. Because he loves the son so much. And this is why the story is so beautiful. A son that he loved so much and he gave everything to. He was, he was willing to uh, let go of it for us. Filthy human beings. So this is why it's so important. So um, this is the second uh, book of Ezra's chapter 1. And I just want to read you this one part here. This is talking about... Israel's disobedience and rejection and why us the Gentiles now um, inherit what God originally intended for the Israelites okay so it says what shall I do to you O Jacob you would not obey me O Judah I will turn to other nations and I will give them my name that they may keep my statutes because you have forsaken me I will also forsake you when you beg mercy of me I will show you no mercy when you call upon me I will not listen to you for you have defiled your hands with blood and your feet are swift to commit murder it is not as though you had forsaken me you have forsaken yourselves said the Lord thus says the Lord Almighty have I not entreated you as a father entreats his sons or a mother her daughters or nurse her children that you should be my people and I should be your God and that you should be my sons and I should be your father? I gathered you as a hen gathers her broads around her wings but now what shall I do to you? I will cast you out from my presence. When you offer oblations to me I will turn my face from you. For I have rejected your feast days and new moons and circumcisions of the flesh. I sent to you my servants, the prophets, but you have taken and slain them and torn their body in pieces. Their blood I will require of you, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord Almighty, your house is desolate. I will drive you out as the wind draws straw. And your sons will have no children because with you they have neglected my commandments and have done what is evil in my sight. I will give your houses to people that will come, who without having heard me will believe. Those to whom I have shown no signs will do what I have commanded. They have seen no prophets, yet they will recall their former state. I will call to witness the gratitude of the people that is to come, whose children rejoice with gladness. Though they do not see me with their bodily eyes, yet with the spirit they will believe the things I have said. And now, Father, and now, Father, I look with pride and see the people coming from the east. To them I will give as leaders Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Hosea and Amos and Micah and Joel and Abadiah and Jonah and Neham and Habakkuk and Zephaniah and Haggai and Zechariah and Malachi who is also called the messenger of the Lord. So I will give your houses to a people that will come who without having heard me will believe. Okay, this is exactly what Christ said. You know, this is exactly what Christ said to Thomas. He said, Thomas, you needed to see my hands to believe. Okay, but blessed are those who do not see me and still believe in me. Okay, this is why the Father sent the Son. It's because people rejected the Father. And if, I think if it was up to God, we would have been all long ago gone. But I think Christ, in his great love, and this is why the Father loves the Son so much, is that Christ probably said to the Father, I will go, I will be that sacrifice, I will go down to them. And the Father would be like, no, what do you want to go down, they're so wicked for. And Jesus said, Father, please, it's the only way. And so because the Father loves us so much, that he ended up, you know, 
for giving us his son. And I think Abraham, the story of Abraham and Isaac had a lot to do with that. I think that father wanted to see if a human being could love him so much that he's like, oh, well, I suppose if Abraham can do this for me, then I can give my son for the whole world. But how beautiful, brothers and sisters, how beautiful. So because God's children, the Israelites, they, they, fors they forsook the father, okay? They've forsaken him. They committed murders. And they've shown, they, they've shown no mercy on father. And so when they call on him and, and they ask for mercy, father's going to be on deaf ears. But we receive this beautiful gift now. The second Ezra's. And then we see here, when the seal is placed upon the age which is about to pass away, then I will show these signs that the books shall be opened before the firmament and all shall see it together. So this is uh, second Ezra's, it's chapter six. Okay, when the seal is placed upon the age which is about to pass away, then I will show these signs the books shall be opened before the firmament and all shall see it together. We can read this in Revelation 11. Okay, and the temple of God was opened in heaven and there was seen in the temple of his ark this testament. And there were lightning and voices and thunders and an earthquake and great hail. Again, the people are going, The people who have rejected him will hear the lightnings and thunders and we're going to hear the um, trumpets, brothers and sisters. And there was a great earthquake when the temple, the ark was revealed in heaven. When the heavens is seed like a scroll... See, we've been lied to so much about how far we're into this, brothers and sisters, okay? And the trumpet shall sound aloud, and when all hear it, they shall suddenly be terrified. At that time, friends will make war on friends like enemies, and the earth, that those who inhabit it, shall be terrified. And the springs of the fountain shall stand still, so that for three hours they shall not flow. Okay, this is like a Revelation 7. Okay. Um, and the angel standing on the four corners, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth nor the sea. Okay. So, as you can see, if there's no wind blowing, the angels are holding it back. This is why the, the springs and the fountains shall stand still, so that for three hours they shall not flow. And it shall be that whoever remains, who's left alive and remain, right? After all that I've foretold you, told to you, shall see himself be saved and shall see my salvation and the end of my world. And they shall see the men who were taken up from their birth have not tasted death. And the earth's inhabitants, the dead in Christ, shall be changed and converted to a different spirit, shall receive their incorruptible body. For the evil shall be blotted out, and the deceit shall be quenched, faithfulness shall flourish, and the corruption shall be overcome, and the truth which has been so long without fruit shall be revealed. Amen. Amen. There's your rapture, brothers and sisters. And you can see, you can see where the timing is and why we've been so deceived. See, it says the seal be placed upon the age okay so the it is finished son go get your bride which is about to pass away i'm going to show you this sign that the book shall be opened before the firmament and all shall see it together geez i wonder what that sounds like could it be when this the um, solar eclipse happens and everybody is looking up because then the trumpet right then the trumpet's going to um, sound this, when the trumpet sounds the dead in Christ shall rise and us who are alive left and remain shall be caught up together, right? So this, this revealing the books being opened at the firmament must happen when we read here in Revelation 7, um, you know, when the wind's not blowing on the earth and then the 144,000 get sealed. This is all happen happening simultaneously. And then, lo and behold, a great multitude gets raptured of all the people in the world, the, of tongues and nations and kindreds, and they're standing before the Lamb. Where did these people come from? From great tribulation. Okay, not from the wrath, not from the affliction, not from the distress, not from the vengeance, the days of vengeance, but from great tribulation. 
there's a lot more people, you know, because you and I sit in here in our houses still and, you know, we look outside, we hear the birds singing and everything like that. You know why? Because we're blessed, brothers and sisters, because we're being faithful and we're watching and waiting for the, for the return of our loving Lord and Saviour, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. But there's other people in the world who have their foot in the world and their foot in the, um, you know, in the heavens and um, this is the chastisement for them. I can guarantee you any, any amount of money that, that they are going through trials and persecutions and great tribulation right now. Because Father doesn't want any soul to perish. So they'll be going through chastisement because this is the great tribulation. You read it, um, you know, I'll read it here. We'll put in great tribulation. As you can see... Um, it's only written three times in the whole Bible. Great Tribulation. Tribulation is everywhere. But um, Great Tribulation is only three times. It's in Matthew twenty four twenty one, For then shall be Great Tribulation. So let's go in context. Okay, pray that your flight... Pray that your flight may not be in the winter, neither on a Sabbath day, for then shall be great tribulation. See, brothers and sisters, where, why are people uh, praying that their flight shouldn't be in winter or on a Sabbath day? When exactly like it says here, that's exactly what happened. When the army surrounded Jerusalem, it was in the winter and on a Sabbath day. And then what does it say? For then there shall be great tribulation, such as never was since the beginning of the world, no, nor, to, um, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. But for the elect's, the elect's sake, those days were shortened. They were shortened to like 10 days, brothers and sisters, or even seven. We could go 10 days from October the 4th when um, the, um, the alarm, the alert system, you know, that went over all the TVs, the radios, the phones, every digital device. It went over all of the USA. Right, and there was great warning about it. It was all over the news. That I believe was our 2023 New Age trumpet warning, the shofar. Okay, the alarm. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Because three days later, brothers and sisters, was the war. The army surrounded Jerusalem. Okay, everybody knew something was going to happen. But yet what we do is if it doesn't happen in that split second, everyone goes back to sleep. When we should have been more alert than ever before. And now, on October the 7th, the war was declared. And seven more days, just like the days of Noah, we're going to have that solar eclipse. Okay, so that's the first instance of Great Tribulation. Second Corinthians, it's not, the words aren't together. <coughs> Pardon me. Revelations 2.22, Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and then that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, ex except they repent of their deeds. This is what I'm talking about, brothers and sisters. We have children of God who are committing adultery and fornications and stuff like that. These are the people that are going to go into great tribulation right at this point of time. They're going to have sicknesses. They're going to be um, in great spiritual torment, right? And that, But it says here, except if they repent of their deeds. This is all it takes. This is all Father asked of us, is to repent and accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior into their heart. Okay? Because man rejected the Father, so the Father went back to his throne up in the heavenly kingdom. Okay, He didn't reside down here on earth anymore because humans didn't want him. So the king sent his son and they rejected his son too and they ended up killing him. But because those people did that, Father took it away from the Israelites and gave it to a new people. That's us. Because he knew that we would love Jesus without seeing him, without, you know, we have to live by faith. And this is what, this is why we're saved, because of the faith that we have. So, and the last one here, Revelations, um, Revelation 7.14, where these people come from, they came out of the great tribulation. 
and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Okay, so here we can see where we are, basically where we have been in the past sort of month or so. Right up until this moment, a couple of days ago, right? Jesus says, I behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, even as I overcame and I am sat down with my father in his throne. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Okay, so he's since his ascension up to the Father to sit at the right hand side of Father's throne, he has been. Can I come into your heart? To every single person, he's given a chance to every single person. Okay, and the, another thing that's just been brought to memory is that on the sixth of October, um, Lauren Cunningham, a, a great preacher. Okay, he's the only man on the entire earth that has ever gone to every single nation on this earth to preach the gospel of good news. And he passed away the day before that war started, brothers and sisters. So the gospel was said to the entire world and now the end can come. You cannot ignore all these signs, brothers and sisters. The time is now. Okay, and after Jesus has knocked on every last heart, after this I looked and behold a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet talking with me. Remember we get the trumpets, the, the, the rejecting people, they get the thunder and lightning which said, come up hither. Come up hither and I will show you these things which must happen hereafter. That is such an important word, brothers and sisters. I'm going to show you everything that's going to happen after I rescue you and take you up immediately in the spirit. Okay, and immediately I was in the spirit in the twinkling of an eye. And behold, a throne was set in heaven and one who sat on the throne. And he that sat on the throne was to look like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow around about the throne in the sight like onto an emerald this is father this he's a spirit brothers and sisters okay jesus christ is the image of the invisible god jesus christ is the rep representation of the father of his love and of his spirit so jesus christ came down as a human being to represent the father okay so here we're looking at the almighty god himself a spirit looking like jasper and a sardine stone with a rainbow around the throne and a sight like an emerald and around about the throne were four and twenty seats and upon the seats i saw four and twenty elders sitting what what's happening here they're clothed in white remnants and they have on their heads crowns of gold brothers and sisters you cannot wear clothes of white remnant or have a crown on your head if you do not have already your incorruptible body remember this this multitude rapture um, a multitude that no man can count this is where this so, so revelation 7 when we read that this is referring back to this remember always remember revelation is not in consecutive order it's, it's made like this. Father conceals the matter so that it is the glory of us to reveal it and try and work out these riddles and parables. This is this very thing, brothers and sisters. We are now all together. Remember Yeshua Jesus Christ because the disciples were arguing. We want to sit next to you. We want to sit next to you. We want to be on the, right, the left-hand side of the throne. And Christ said, that's not my job to give. I go to sit on the right-hand side, but what, where your positions are, um, you're going to sit with me and you're going to judge the nations. Okay, when the time was right. Okay, so they are going to be, um, they're now clothed. Okay, because when you die, your soul goes back to Father. Okay, Father is the one who gave you your soul. When you die, it goes back to the Father. And this is why um, when Christ comes down at the rapture, he's on a cloud. That cloud is all the souls of the people who have died, brothers and sisters. And they're coming back to get their bodies. 
okay this is why the otherwise you know because people are like what's the point of getting a body because it's all um you know um what do you call it all, all degraded and you know the skeletons and all that kind of stuff because that is you brothers and sisters the people who have died that is your body you are special you were thought of at the creation of the world so you need that body but that body is going to be made incorruptible perfect no longer incorruptible no longer are you going to get sore bones or joints no longer you're going to die no longer you're going to get cuts and bleed and be sore and fall over and all that stuff but you still need your body okay so these people who have passed on before us their soul is with the father where it came from and uh, that's essentially what we are is the soul right that's what makes us human beings um but this is why this is this is the cloud that Yeshua Jesus Christ comes on and he the earthquake and the lightning and the thunder cracks open those graves and this is why the dead in Christ rise first the souls you know will go back into their bodies and they're going to make, be made incorruptible in the twinkling of an eye and then us who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them and this is why from now on the um you know people are wearing clothes and have crowns on their heads but we're going to see everything hereafter so we get taken up okay we get taken up before the wrath before the vengeance and um, all of that okay so uh, one more thing before I go brothers and sisters to ver uh, verify and clarify that we're not appointed to the time coming okay and we have to leave before then okay we've got down here um, very very important okay when you see the armies compassed with uh, when you see Jerusalem compassed with armies then know that the desolation or the destruction of Jer Jerusalem is very very close okay notice from verse 8 to um, 20 it's talking to you okay take heed that you do not be deceived when you hear rumors of wars okay um, um, before all these they shall lay hands on you and persecute you they sh shall turn to you for a testimony settle it in your heart um, I will give you a mouth of wisdom and you will be betrayed and you shall be hated of men um, there's uh, not a hair on your head will perish in your patience possesses you your soul okay when we come down to 20 it starts talking about them okay so it says when you see jerusalem surrounded with armies so when when the church you see that this happening you know the destruction is very close and i'm about to get you okay then it changes to them and let them that are in judea flee to the mountains okay and um and let them which are in the midst of it depart out and let not them that are in the countries enter there into for these will be the da days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled but woe unto them with child that give suck in those days for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people okay and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive okay and and they shall see the son of man coming in the cloud with power and great glory it's so it, it jumps from talking to us and then we see this great and final last sign which is the um jerusalem being surrounded with armies and then it's telling this is the message for the rest of them flee to the mountains immediately and this is what's happening literally right as we speak but this is the most important thing brothers and sisters for these are the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. These are the days of vengeance that all things written may be fulfilled. And when you go up here and we go to proclaim. Mm. 
you know the verse where Jesus goes into um, he goes into the temple and he opens up the scroll and he says, "I'm going to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord," and then he reads all of that um, that verse from Isaiah, but he stops right at the end, and there's one verse that he doesn't read. That's literally this verse here, brothers and sisters. For these are the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. He is literally fulfilling this after the um, the armies are surrounding Jerusalem. This, will, this is about literally to be fulfilled. Because as soon as we're out of here, the days become the days of vengeance and wrath. See? And wrath upon this people and distress, great distress and wrath. And vengeance that is not for us we are not here anymore um, so you need to you need to understand brothers and sisters that these people who are telling you that this has already happened before um, and another thing to reassure you that um, the great millennium and all that um, hasn't happened yet is the fact that um, in Daniel's Daniel 9 it says you know you've got 70 years to bring in everlasting righteousness um, finish iniquity um, you know uh, let's go there so I don't miss my word Daniel 9 because this definitely not has happened okay um, you have you've got 70 years to finish the transgression to make an end to sin there's definitely no end to sins it's worse than ever before and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and the prophecy and to anoint the most holy to anoint the most holy brothers and sisters this is legit the reason why we're going up into the heavenly kingdom is to anoint the most holy for the coronation of our king that's this is the whole reason we're going up to there Okay, and, and Father can deal with the crap that's going on down here. Okay, we get our reward. And this is this is amazing what we're about to go into. We're going to see the coronation of our beautiful, loving Lord and Saviour. Okay, from a prince to the king. And uh, see, this is his rightful. Because remember when he was on the cross and they, they put the royal robe on him and they were mocking him and they put a crown of thorns on him? That... <sighs> evilness the evilness but now brothers and sisters he is about to be anointed as the most holy with a holy crown and a holy robe a gorgeous robe now is the time brothers and sisters so please do not listen to anybody who's telling you that we've got all these things to come yet and that it's still far off and everything like this and we've got seven years and we have, we have to wait until 2030 and all this other stuff, brothers and sisters. No. He promised us that it's going to be in the days of Noah when he comes back. Normal days. Because it's going to overtake the whole world like a snare. You have to remember that and be at peace. That because of God's children, the Israelites, because they rejected him, the servants went out to the byways and the highways and they collected the bad and the good and they furnished the wedding with guests. So don't be like Lot's wife. Don't look back on your, your, your family members or your pets or, or the things of this world. You just keep your eyes on Jesus. Be ready. Have your Jesus pads packed at the door. So at any moment now, any moment now, brothers and sisters, we're going to be redeemed. All right. I think I will leave that. I have an incredibly stiff neck. Okay. It's two hours and 80 minutes. Good stuff. All right. I hope this video, video blesses you and it gives you the ultimate encouragement to know that the time is now, the time is near and your redemption is sure. Okay. If you're faithful, upon looking and, uh, and waiting for the appearing of Yeshua Jesus Christ, then your heart is absolutely sealed to the day of your redemption, which is imminently close. So, um, brothers and sisters, if there's anything that comes across, like the, the news at the moment is flat stick, and it's like one thing after the other every hour, if not every half an hour, something new is coming, I will try and come back on and, you know, let you know what's giving you know let you know what's going on or give you updates um please brothers and sisters please be patient with me on my emails i know some of you take such 
and I truly appreciate you know these beautiful long letters and telling me about testimonies and and asking me questions brothers and sisters I am overrun with emails at the moment and I'm not ignoring you I will try to get to each and every one of you but if I write to you and say amen sister or amen brother um, it's not because I'm trying to be short with you it's literally that I've you know I want to address everybody and talk to everybody and <sighs> soon we'll be in heaven and soon we'll be able to um, you know embrace one another and give each other a cuddle and dance and and sing and cry and and just be uh, in the presence of the almighty God and his beautiful son Yeshua Jesus Christ and all the angels we're going to meet our guardian angels and it's just yeah you know it's just uncomprehendable what we're about to go through so I'm going to leave you with that, brothers and sisters. I pray that this video has blessed you and encouraged you for you to see for yourself um, the very, very soon redemption. The fact that these things are now, it's not it's way off in the future or way back in the past. It is now. And I pray with all my heart and soul, brothers and sisters, that you may please search on your own accord via the scriptures and with Father's spirit in your heart. Um the truth about this trinity okay because it is something that has been weighing on my mind to get up and bring up and be bold about um because it's just of utmost importance it's particularly if the father and even jesus himself was very clear that there is don't call me good there's no one good except for the father okay he's very very clear on um you know the lord thy god is one so please, like I said, may everything go on to me, every consequence or whatever, if, if this not be true. But I just, I, actually before I go, I want to tell you two things. Um, one is the verse that people will say in um, Isaiah. Okay, people will say in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 9, they'll say, look, um, uh, what do you call it, that God said, um, today I'm going to give you a son and his name is the everlasting, uh, a wonderful counsellor, everlasting father, the almighty God. Okay, that is how that's written. But brothers and sisters, again, with a little bit of research and looking at the original Hebrew, for one, that's not even Isaiah 6, it's Isaiah 5, and it says that the... It, the whole verse is back the front. It says the wonderful counsel, the almighty God, the everlasting father will call his son the prince of peace. The deception is rampant, brothers and sisters. Satan has infiltrated us to an absolute T. And here's another perfect example of what the, um, the different versions of the Bible, how deceptive they are. Okay, Here we see in John uh, 4 12 no man has seen God at any time that's pretty explicit no man has seen God at any time for if we love one another uh, hang on let's say it oh well that's that's true no man has seen God at any time but that's not the one I was looking for must be this one here we are. John 1 18. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten son, which is in the bosom of the father, he has declared him. It's pretty straightforward, right? No one has seen God ever. But the son of God, who is in the bosom of the father, because that's where he was begotten from, right? It is the son of God who's declared God. He came down to this earth and he's declared God. But no one has seen him at any time. But the Son of God has declared him. Now, when we read, when we go to NIV, have a look at the danger of this, brothers and sisters. Have a look at the danger. One more time, in King James Version, no one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. Now we go to the NIV. And the NIV says this, no one has ever seen God, but the one and only son who is himself God, 
and is in the closest relationship with the father has made him known. Are you kidding me right now? Now, brothers and sisters, if you are going to sit there and still defend the Trinity and to say that, uh, look, I can't do anything. This is the job of the Holy Spirit to convince and convict you in this and in all truth. Okay, I can only show you these things, but you need to understand, you know, a lot of people will think, oh, the, the Bible can't be touched. Okay, the original, probably, yeah, the original version, the original scriptures that was written cannot be touched. But everything else is a counterfeit and a copy, right? And Satan has every right to do that because Father is relying on you to love him enough to search these matters out. But this is an, a massive blasphemy from going and saying that um, no one has ever seen God, the, the, the Son um, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has revealed him, to, to saying that no one has ever seen God but the one and only Son who is God himself. That, the, the blasphemy, brothers and sisters, the blasphemy. Remember where it comes from, the Council of Nicaea, all roads lead back to Rome. So I'm going to leave you with that. Again, be encouraged. Our redemption draws near. Search the Bible. Have it written on your heart, brothers and sisters, because this is the ultimate peak of deception that we're ever going to experience because it's right at the last second and Satan wants to drag as many souls as he can down to hell with him. Don't let that be. Let no one steal your crown. All right. May God bless you. May the sun bless you. If I don't see you in the next video, I will see you in the skies. I love you. God bless you. Bye-bye.